Hey, hey, hey. Hello, Vanessa. Ooh, how are you doing? I am awesome. Or oh, I like the way you say it, so I'm going to steal yours. I am amazing. <laughs> I am amazing. So um, I don't know if you can see, maybe you can, the sun rays coming through the windows. I got, I even have the blinds closed. So I think that means summer is coming. Summer is <laughs> coming. I'm excited. I, I, but you know, I, I, I say that I'm excited, but I'm more of a winter person. As long really? as it's not snowing, but I love I love the, the snuggies and the hot cocos <laughs> and the hoodies on, you know, and stuff. So yeah. So I love I love the I love getting my toes polished. I love walking around in my flip flops. I mean, I could walk around in flip flops all day, all night. I'm yeah. telling you. I love so I love the summertime because I can go out. I even love, people think I'm being funny, but I love suntan. Okay, okay. You know, and I try to explain, you know, to my friends who don't, who think, you know, like, well, Antoinette, you're permanently tanned. And it's like, no, I'm just like you, you know, during the winter time, I'm a little lighter mm -hmm. and a little less golden. Mm -hmm. And then during the summertime, I put my suntan lotion on and then I get nice and gold. Mm -hmm. And you know, oh, so I love sun tanning. So I love this. This is my my time is coming. My time of year is coming. So. You know what I like about this? I'm going to, and this is just funny because you guys, you know, I'm all about nonprofits. I'm just going to bring this to that because you have two of us here and yeah. we have two totally distinctive likes and enjoyment of certain things. And so certain times of the year, like you're like, hey, I like this and I like supporting X, Y, Z, right? And I'm a winner yeah. person. I'm like, well, I sub like doing this. And so when we talk, I know, I know we hadn't even started talking about, but when you're talking about doing a fundraiser or event or donor acquisition or solicit for money, you have to look at the individual people and you have to tailor events specifically to certain people. You can't just think everybody wants it all, right? So if you may have had a nice little winter event, I might show up. Or I might show up because I'm a winter person and I love being snuggling, but now the summer's here and there's something outside. Okay, I'm going to come. And then you may decide, you know what? I'm always hanging out in the sun. There's this nice win winter ball or something. I'm yeah. going to go. So it's really, yeah. so I just had to bring that out just, just as you and I were talking, because we yeah. do that. We talk about some, and then we can bounce it off each other. Next thing you know, we done, we're on to the topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so just so you are clear, people listening and watching us today, our topic is um, fundraisers. Like, what is the fundraiser that you should be doing? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's important to remember that not every fundraiser is for everybody. Nope. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say this before Vanessa gets a chance to say, I'm going to tell you this because uh, this was the best advice I ever heard Vanessa give uh, in a class when she teaches her, um, her uh, grant writing class, she starts off by telling us, not every grant is for you. So if you are a substance abuse organization, you do not want to apply for um, uh, Budweiser's, you know, grant. It's like, you know, and we talk about this, right? It's the company that you keep. So if you are a substance abuse organization, you want to steer clear of companies that produce, you know, alcohol, you know, they, that's there. You want to stay away from it because of the perception. And mm -hmm. also we talked about this a little bit um, when we were talking about um, bank accounts and, and websites and those sorts of things. When you get when you are soliciting the company to do fundraising for you or you're doing fundraising and using that company you promote that company mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you want to be very careful so to today's topic is all about you know identifying your fundraiser mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I just thought I'd start by sharing that little bit of information because when Vanessa shared that with us in that class, I mean, all kinds of bells and whistles went off for me just realizing how important it is 
to make sure that your funders, you know, the people that you're doing business with, that it aligns with your mission. Mm-hmm. Yes, and you, you guys have kind of have the same values. And that's funny, as you were talking, I said, let's play a game today, you and I. And it's not even so much of a game, but let's just start, since we're talking about fundraisers, let's just start throwing out fundraisers, different type of fundraisers that people can do, you know? Oh, yeah, okay, I got one, I got one. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm such a fat girl and I'm always thinking food, but there are, you know, that there, there are all the, the donut, the Krispy Kreme donut, um, Joe, uh, Joe Corby's pizza, but also um, like Papa John's and Domino's, they also have um, fundraisers. Chick-fil-A has one. So of course, you know, I'm thinking of all the food, but those food places offer and Katie did you can't forget Katie did I mean I, I'm, I'm sure my mom put me through school oh, I love Katie so tell me about what what are those so you're talking about these things because my mind goes different directions when I heard of like like Chick-fil-a what I would do is when I have a, when I was doing a fundraiser I would go to Chick-fil-a and say will you provide all the, the the meals for this event that I'm doing so when you talk about Katie Dids and the pizza places, are you talking about selling coupons? What are you talking about when you're doing that? Absolutely. When you're talking about fundraiser? Yeah. So I'm thinking like they, so like the pizza places, Papa John's and Domino's, they have a program where you as a nonprofit can say, hey, can I have like a hundred coupons, uh, discount tickets, and they'll give you the discount tickets. And then you can say, all right, I will uh, sell these discount tickets for like $10. I'll sell them for $15, whatever they'll allow you to sell them up to. Katie Dids is kind of the same thing where Katie Dids are, uh, you put in orders. And so people place orders with you. You collect the money. Katie Dids allows you to keep a portion of the money and then you send them um, back a portion. But with uh, Papa John's and yeah, with Katie Domino's, Dance. hmm? I'm sorry, I love Katie Diz. And I had them when I was a kid and I haven't had them since I was an adult. And I had to write that down because I'm going, if I'm going to see if they got some vegan Katie Diz and I'm all in it. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I'll send you a recipe. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but um, yeah, so anyway, so yeah, so they... That's how you you do those. But with Chick-fil-A, you could do two different things with Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is probably like um, one of the best companies I can think of when it comes to this whole idea of um, fundraising and community outreach. So Chick-fil-A will do a community outreach thing in that you can say, hey, I'm having an event. There'll be 50 people here. Can, you know, will you donate? Um, breakfast. And either they'll donate the breakfast or they'll tell you, instead of donating the breakfast, you pay for the breakfast and we'll give you coupons that you can then give out um, to the people who come. So that really is not a fundraiser. Mm -mm. That's more of a, you know, like that's a donation and then that's an in-kind community gift, right? You give those out to the community. But Chick-fil-A does then also have a fundraiser where you could go on a particular night, Panera Bread to, I'm sorry, am I talking too long? I didn't talk 20 minutes about this one thing. (laughs) You can go to Panera, you can go to Chick-fil-A on a particular night and you will say, um, tonight is the Nonprofit Founders Club night. And so whoever comes out to, and you pick a Chick-fil-A, you pick up a Panera bread. Who, wh- whoever comes out on this, you know, anyone, anyone in the community, anyone, you come out between this time and this time, all the proceeds that we get, um, that Panera bread gets, they'll give a percentage. It's probably mm-hmm. like, I think two or 3%, but they'll give a percentage to the um, organization. Right. So. And that's what the organization really markets to um, get people coming. So those are great ideas. And then you also have like your bolathons and your golf tournaments, you know, <clears throat> you have, there, there's so many different fundraisers you can do. You have your gala events. Oh you know? yeah. 
Okay, let's go back real quick to this golf. Golf tournaments, I mean, you can even do, we now have these things here called top shelf, top, mm, top golf. Mm -hmm. Top, top, golf. Golf. top like, shelf is a liquor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about that. <laughs> you gotta have your top shelf when you're playing top golf <laughs> but but um the top golf you know you can have golf events where people who don't golf but maybe they want to learn mm -hmm. that can, you can do that as part of your fundraiser also you can have mm -hmm. some golf pros that will offer training and people pay and it could be a part of your your golfing outing. So just thought mm -hmm. I'd share that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we got to remember okay. when we're doing when we're doing fundraisers, we have to remember that fundraisers are also can do be fee for services. So you could do a conference, you could do a training. Those are also fundraisers because you're raising funds for your organization. You know, yeah. and you want to, you know, if you have a cool slogans and cool colors, your T-shirts, you can do that as a fundraiser. I know when I first started, you talked about Katie did. I did World's Finest Chocolate and I was selling those for years and just getting, you know, some of that um, extra little money in so I can get my yeah. nonprofit up and running. You know, sometimes we yeah. want to step out and we want to do something really big, but there's process. You have to get funding ready. And a lot of times, and I'm finding a lot of people are not funding ready. They're like, I got my 501c3. I'm ready to get funding. No, you're not, because all you have is a piece of paper saying that you have a nonprofit status, but you don't technically have a nonprofit. You don't have a program, a project, or so. So you have to get funding ready. And then, yeah. of course, we know that there's, there's, there's grant writings, there's sponsorship. There's yeah. so many different avenues to raise money. And just word of mouth, friend fundraising. Yeah. There's, there's just, it's a plethora. You know, and so yeah. I'm looking so forward to our, um, the fearless fundraising that we're going to have on June 10th, 11th, and 12th, which is going to be free. We're going to have people talking about different fundraising, but also talking about getting fundraising ready. Because just because yeah. you have your 501c, it's like, I'm not ready. I know there were so many times, still right today, you said do a fundraiser. Hey, I'm not ready. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it takes a lot to gear up to getting a fundraiser. You talk about auctions. What does that take? You know, it, it's it's so much. And we're, we'll talk more about it next week, too, about who's going to help you with all this. But can you think yeah. of any other fundraisers that you other some fundraisers was, that you went to that you really enjoy? Oh, yes. Yeah. Silent auctions are so nice. And you'll be so surprised by, you know, the things that people find to offer. So I love silent auctions. Yeah. Also, the another 50, fun, the 50 50 auctions yeah. people love that because they're like i get a chance to get 50 percent of the pot i'm going to buy more and more tickets so yeah they get it exactly tickets. yeah and another thing that i like so um kind of the same idea uh this organization i used to sit on the board for at their annual gala and award ceremony they had this little um little uh treasure box and inside the treasure box was a treasure. One year, um, they actually gave away a car. But most of the time, they gave away like a weekend vacation trip to like this real exclusive um, uh, resort down in Virginia. And what you did was you paid for the keys. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't really 50-50, but when you think about either it was a sponsored gift or it was a donated gift um, mm -hmm. or the organization paid for the gift. I think even one year we gave away Hamilton tickets. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. But nice. um, I wanted to say that we it's, it's not really fundraising, but it is uh, donations. And that is making sure that your board, your board of directors are giving to the organization itself. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe we can talk about this next month or when we have our conversation where we get more involved, talk more specifically about the board's roles and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But um, I think all nonprofit founders should be thinking about how to involve the board in the financial health of the organization. And that's really powerful too. And I'm going to throw this plug in because you're going to be talking about that at the Fearless Fundraising Summit. So if you guys are watching this now, 
or you guys, and or you've watched it after the Fearless Fundraising Summit, it's, it, it, you can still have an opportunity to really get in depth with Antoinette's talk because she's really going to be talking about really how do you, what's, what's your board's role, board's role and to really engage them and really the different fundraising um, opportunities. Another fundraiser that I'd like, and then we're going to have to cut this off because we can go on and on about fundraisers. But it's like, say, for instance, you go to, I'm just going to say Harley Davidson and they donate a motorcycle or even partial donation. Your organization sells tickets, $25, $100 tickets until you make enough to pay for that motorcycle, right? Uh, and yeah. then you, you get more and above. So then you buy the motorcycle from Harley Davidson. You make more money. So you say you, you need to sell 500 tickets. Well, your goal should be to sell a thousand tickets. The first 500 goes to purchasing it. The next 500 goes to the organization pocket, but you've given away a Harley Davidson. Yeah. And people yeah. do that with houses also. Have you seen that? So we can go on and on about fundraisers. But wow. we're going to talk, talk, talk about that as we go on uh, more yeah. and more. Nonprofit Fellows well, Club, we'll be talking before about fundraisers. You, before you close, though, I just want to say, and I think you said it, so I might just be repeating you, but I hope people see how exciting, how innovative, how creative these ideas are. It, you know, like it doesn't have to be just one little thing. And it doesn't have to be the same thing every time. You have, like you said, there's a, I can't say the word, how come? Plethora. Plethora. <laughs> I know people were like, wait a minute, did some, the internet just get quiet for a second? <laughs> but there's a plethora of ideas and, and ways to, to make this to help your organization be successful. Right, and then as a, as a new nonprofit, you have to find your niche. You have to find your jam as it is, you know, as they say nowadays, because <laughs> all of them are not gonna be for you, but you need to find that one that you really like, that's, that you can do. And, so, and then that could be your annual event or something that you really, really are good at, but you have to go out and test different things. I tested so many different things until I found my jam, which was grant writing. I tried everything else and it was like, eh, if you guys seen the, the uh, you guys seen uh, Soul, the cartoon Soul, and they have, <laughs> they have a, uh, what's, what's, her, what's her number, uh, 22? And she's like, eh, try pizza, eh, try this, eh, you know, eh, <laughs> like, her jam, you know. So you have to really find out what fits for you and what fits for your organization. So we'll talk more about that because we can go on and on about nonprofits and fundraising. And so if you, if you haven't joined the membership club, I'm going to invite you to join the membership club. It's all things nonprofit. We have three live sessions a month to help you start, grow, and build your nonprofit so you can make a difference in the world and fulfill your purpose and your passion. So we thank you for listening to us. And if you want to know more about building your nonprofit, check us out at the Nonprofit Founders Club. It's all about your nonprofit. Yay.